Hi, welcome back. My name is Score Chaser, and this is Score Plays. Today, I'm going to be starting the Claire A scenario of Resident Evil 2. We are going to be doing Leon B after this. If you didn't know, the original Resident Evil 2 had, uh, just like the remake, had two separate campaigns. And they could run concurrent to one another. So you could start with either Leon or Claire. And then the other character that you didn't play as would start another harder scenario. And I always preferred Leon B to Claire B. So we're going to be starting with Claire first and then ending with Leon. So this is going to be two separate playthroughs as one playthrough. So let's get started. Try and get my volume at an okay level. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T virus a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation of the affair. The case was apparently closed thanks to the efforts of Stars members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments this was the first Resident Evil game I played, and I just remember being blown away by how good the graphics looked. <laughs> because, like... Keep in mind, stuff like this was exciting back then. <sighs> I'm finally here. safer. There. Up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I always thought that was such a monotone response. What's going on? I arrived in town and the whole place went Great. insane. The radio's out. A cop, right? Yeah, first day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. Still in 
one piece. Okay, so we are now in Raccoon City. And I'm going to be doing a specific style of getting to the police station. I am not going to be picking up any items because I want to get the locker key to get Claire's revolver. Zombies. That was weird. I was trying to get to uh, this menu. Okay. Wanted to get some auto aim going on because. You can see I got two pieces of ammunition, those little red boxes over there, but I'm not going to pick them up. I wanted to get auto aim on because you can't control the camera in this game, and it helps to know when there's something around the corner, because you can't really see, just like right here in this frame, if there's something coming at me, I would not be able to see it. I have to take a hit from some of these zombies to push through them. Ooh, slip right past that one. Because I need to conserve my ammunition. The reason I know about this uh, Easter egg about getting to the police station, because when I was 12, 13, when this game was shiny and brand new, um, my friends and I rented it, like, a lot from our local video store for $2 a rental for a two-day period. And we played every scenario, every, dang it, every possible difficulty. And when we beat, I don't remember what the combination of scenarios that you need to do and what ranking you need to get. But there was a message that said, reach to the police station without picking anything up. <laughs> I mean, even in the, the very late 90s, Capcom was still doing those horrible translations.
Okay, so we have reached the police station without picking anything up. We should now see Brad Vickers down here. And we do. We can't take him down right now because he is a stronger than usual zombie. So we're going to need a better weapon or more ammunition. Still remember where a lot of this crap is. Uh, Raccoon City Police Station. Now, the reason why this looks like a non-traditional police station is that this was a art museum beforehand. Hence, all the statues and cool little uh, paintings and stuff. I normally can beat this game with only saving once or twice, but for safety's sake, I'm going to be saving a little bit more than I usually do. Hang in there. Are you the only officer left in the Hang building? in there. Who are you? Claire. Claire Redfield. <laughs> I'm looking for my brother, Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris, Jill, Barry. Every last Stars team member has disappeared. We should have listened to them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures. In a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. At the risk of their own lives. But no one believed them. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But, but... Just go. Okay. Just hang in there. I'll be back soon. Now it's like he locks the door. But if he's unable to move, how does he lock the door? That actually might be too loud, I apologize. Um, it's, it's always tricky to find the perfect balance when doing this on a phone. So, uh, please excuse that. I might be doing that a bit. So, he mentioned Umbrella. All you really need to know about the Umbrella Corporation is that it is a pharmaceutical company that has been creating biological weapons. That's really all you need to know. Okay, so that key card that he gave me unlocked that side door right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and go back and take down Brad to save a trip back because I want that uh, that I want that Smith and Wesson revolver. It is a very fast. Very powerful handgun. And it'll make uh, the game a little bit easier, so. This is what I'm talking about, about the auto-aim. I just automatically rotated to face an enemy. And he is a bullet sponge. He's still not down. Oh, okay. A little bit of RNG there in my favor, I suppose. Okay, now this key unlocks the lockers in the photo development room. Or the dark room.
So then we can now take this through this door and we get our first safe room, quote unquote. It's not a full safe room, but it's just got one of these boxes. These magic boxes, if you've never played a traditional Resident Evil, anything I put into this box will appear in any other box like it. So if I find another box, that knife that I put in there will be in all of them. Police Memorandum August 23rd, 1998 This letter is just to inform everyone about the recent movement of the equipment that has happened during the precinct's rearrangement. The safe with the four-digit lock has been moved from the star's office to the second floor to the eastern <laughs> to the eastern office on the first floor. 2236 Raccoon Police Liaison Department So that is important to know. That is the safe where that injured officer was. Desk is locked. Will you use lockpick? Yes, I will. First aid spray. You see, Claire, and we won't be using these. At least I hope we're not going to be using them. I, I haven't played through Resident Evil 2 in a little bit. But first aid sprays knock down your score. Because they fully refill your health. And here is our first liquor. But no, as I was saying, Claire starts with a lockpick, so she can unlock all the doors um, that require small keys. And Leon starts with a lighter, which you can use for three or four puzzles, and that's about it. So Claire gets the better, better end of that bargain. Now, this thing that uh, it's about to come up is called a liquor. It is blind. So, if I'm quiet, I can move around them. But because of all this broken glass on the floor, it can hear that. So we're just going to be... We're going to try and just walk past him. And if that fails, we run. See, he's not moving. Yeah, he spotted me. Run! <laughs> I have to come back through this way when I have the lighter because there is a fireplace that I need to light to get a red gem. There's zombies here. Can I sneak past them all? Nope. Oh, I ripped his arm off. Cool. Ah. I'm slightly injured. Come on, get through the door! <laughs> Let's heal up. Now we're going to unlock. Yes, we will use the special key. There is an outfit that should fit you. Will you change your clothes? Why not? Put on her... I think it's a cowgirl outfit in this one. Pardon me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There's an old gun in here. Will you take the Colt SAA? Yes, we will. Colt SSA artillery model used by cowboys in the Wild West designed for a quick draw. Yeah, so it is a fast gun. She uh, shoots from the hip. Yeah, I, I guess you would say that's more of a motorcycle outfit. I'm gonna put that gun away. It's too bad we can't take bullets out of it. Because that would come in handy. I think there's something in here? Yes, more handgun bullets, thank you. Operation Report 2, September 28th. Early morning, 2.30 a.m. 
Zombies overran the operation room, and another battle broke out. We lost four more people, including David. We're down to four people, including myself. We failed to secure the weapons cache, and hope for our survival continues to diminish. We won't last much longer. We agreed upon a plan to escape through the sewer. There's a path leading from the precinct underground to the sewage dispo disposal plant. And pardon me, I have dyslexia, and I can read to myself okay, but when I try to read out loud, I make mistakes, so please excuse that. We should be able to access the sewers through there. The only drawback is that there is no guarantee the sewage disposal plant is free of any possible dangers. We know our chances in the sewers are slim, but anything is better than simply waiting here to die. In order to buy more time, we locked the only door leading to the underground, which is located in the eastern office. We left the key behind in the western office, since it's unlikely that any of those creatures have the intelligence to find it and unlock the door. I pray that this operation report will be helpful to whoever may find it. Recorder Elliot Edward. Thank you, Elliot. Now we know where to get a key. To get a key! Haha. <laughs> Also, if I take any undeveloped film to this room, I can develop it. Yeah, just like that. That was six shot. No, that was five shots. No. I wanted to... This is another thing that kind of breaks the game. Is I can reload from the menu. That's all of them. Da -da 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 -da. I need a key to get through there. So we are going upstairs. Got about two and a half reloads. This is the first uh, quote-unquote puzzle. I need to move these statues so they're facing this guy. And behind the statue, there's bullets. It's funny how you remember a lot of these things. And... <laughs> I mean, I haven't seriously played this game in a number of years. It's probably been about ten years since I've played Claire. But even still, that's there for Leon, but... Oh, come on. <laughs> Another thing I think I should mention is that this game uses tank controls. And a lot of people kind of crap on tank controls, but for this game it works. If you do not know what I'm talking about, tank controls basically mean that going left rotates you left, going right rotates you right, up makes you go forward depending on where you're facing, and back makes you go reverse. So even if I'm facing this way, in order to come towards the camera I need to press up. Back will bring me back, etc, etc. It works for the game. Because it's very unintuitive for someone that's never played it. And that's the point. You're supposed to feel helpless in a kind of scenario like this. Okay, got the star's office. Pardon me. And I get a grenade launcher. Yes, I will take that. You'd be foolish not to. Okay, over here we got a first aid spray. Oh no, that's Resident Evil 3. <laughs> Resident Evil 3 also takes place in some of the locations in Resident Evil 2. 
This is Chris's desk. Chris is her brother. Chris's diary. August 8th, my birthday. <laughs> I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that Umbrella conducted T-virus research in that mansion. Anyone infected turns into a zombie. But the entire mansion went up with the explosion, along with any incriminating evidence. Since Umbrella employs so many people in town, no one is willing to talk about the incident. It looks like I'm running out of options. August 17th. We've been receiving a lot of local reports about strange monsters appearing at random throughout the city. This must be the work of Umbrella. August 24th. With the help of Jill and Barry, they're the other main characters in the first game, I finally obtained information vital to this case. Umbrella has begun research into the new G-Virus, a variation of the original T-Virus. Haven't they done enough damage already? We talked it over and have decided to fly to the main Umbrella headquarters in Europe. I won't tell my sister about this trip because doing so could put her in danger. Please forgive me, Claire. Now, he mentions that they all decided to go over, but... Uh, Jill and Barry do not go with. Barry is not seen again in the series until... Well, he makes a cameo in Resident Evil 3 as one of the alternate endings, but he doesn't officially show back up again in the Resident Evil canon until Revelations 2, which is many years later. Now, let's see, there is... This is Wesker's desk. If you search it 50 times, you'll get a, uh, spe a another Easter egg of one of the other female stars members, uh, Rebecca Chambers. Just in like a basketball uniform. It's really not worth the, the hassle. Federal Police Department Internal Investigation Report. Mr. Chris Redfield, Raccoon City Police Department Stars Division, and that's Special Tactics and Rescue Squad, I believe. As per your request, we have conducted our internal investigation and discovered the following information. 1. Regarding the G-Virus currently under development by Umbrella Incorporated. So far, it's unconfirmed that the G-Virus even exists. We're continuing with our investigation. 2. Regarding Mr. Brian Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. Mr. Irons has allegedly received a large sum of funds and bribes from Umbrella over the last five years. He was apparently involved in the cover-up with the Mansion Lab case along with several other incidents in which Umbrella appears to have direct involvement. Mr. Irons has been arrested under suspicion of rape in two separate counts during his years as a university student. He underwent psychiatric evaluation as a result of the charges, but was released due to circumstantial evidence as well as his phenomenal academic standing. Wow, how does that sound familiar, huh? <laughs> this day and age. As such, extreme caution is advised when dealing with him. Jack Hamilton, Section Chief, Internal Investigations, United States Federal Police Department. Yeah, so the chief of police is a creep. He is just... He makes you feel all the bad things. We will see him eventually. Oh, that's right. I need to take this key back to the statue in the main area. And it'll give me the key that unlocks that door. So we need to head back down. That door is blocked off. Nope. We're not gonna... I'm not gonna waste time going into the photo development room to drop off this red gem. Because there is that other box. Okay, now we need to deal with the liquor. But before that, there is zombie arms! And zombie arms! Those don't hurt you. They're just there to make you jump. I remember the first time 
playing this at like 2 in the morning. Now we're going to go slowly. It's on the ceiling. Got it! Run, Claire! Oh god. Oh god. I'm going to take care of him eventually. It's just if you can avoid, better. It's better if you can avoid. Run, Claire! Shake them sassy pans! Okay. I did not... Uh, the one weapon that I missed out on, because I didn't pick it up at the Kendo gun shop, was the bow gun. So I am basically short one weapon. But that doesn't matter because this pistol and the grenade launcher are all I really need. Check out them graphics. Will you take the precinct key? Yes, I will. It's in the shape of a spade. So all the keys in this police department are themed after, uh, you know, the four suits in a deck of cards. Spades, clubs, diamonds, hearts. I think we're just going to go ahead and take care of our friend. He's been around a little too long. What? I thought that would have taken him out for sure. Oh well, case we're all. He's gone. I've used the spade key. Okay, there. It's a copy machine. There's ink ribbons in here. Yes. We will take those. report. September 20th, 9.30, reporter Sergeant Neil Carlson. We received a report of suspicious individuals skulking around the sewers in the, un in the outskirts of Raccoon City. I searched the area and located the individual, but he ran away before I was able to question him. I recovered the following items. A small amount of C4 plastic explosive, an electric detonator, a 9x19... Oh, I'm sorry... Nine. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Nineteen nine millimeter bullets. Wow. So that is in the evidence locker. So I need to get the uh, password for that as well. Will you take the crank? Yes, I will take the crank. Are you yanking my crank? It's a square-shaped crank. You have to check some items to get a better description of them in the menu. So that went from just being a crank to a square crank, so it's more specific to what I need. Haha. -ha. And that is used only once, I believe, and that's it. Oh, I already picked the herb up. Now, I believe I need the diamond key to go to this door across the hall that I'm heading to right now. The diamond key is the one for me. Yeah, I believe that's the diamond key, but we're gonna check. I was right. Oh, 10 points for score.
Okay. Halt right there, Zombo. You coming after me or what? Because I don't want to waste ammo. Like that. I wasted a round. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, she crawled through this little vent. I don't know how she fit in there. Yes, when you use a key, and I don't know how your character knows that, it's like, oh, well, I've used this as much as I can. Might as well get rid of it. Leon! Claire, you made it! Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. Excuse me, Leon. And she came and crawled through here, and this is the door that's blocked off that I pass in that section where I push the statues. More bullets? Yay, it's my birthday. I will unlock this, and I think it's grenade rounds. Flame rounds. Yes, I will take that. Thank you much. Okay, I'm going here. And this is another puzzle. This is for... I think it's just moving... These each once and then that twice. Yes. I'm talking to myself, but you'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, I just need to fall through the floor. Blue, gold, gold, blue, gold, blue, blue. Yes, I will. Oh, it's just moving this one. And this one. Oh, what a puzzle. <laughs> now, this is another item that I need to collect. Yes. There are four of these. There's actually three of them, but one of them's broken in half. So, that takes us to the main hall. Do I have space? I don't want to... But I think if I go this way, then... I'm trying to remember everything, so please uh, forgive me. Oh, there is a liquor right there. Come here, senior fappy pants. Oh, I thought I killed it. Oh, come on. Why does he get invisibility frames? That's not fair. I'm doing this to save time. Because if I use the crank here, then I won't need to drag it with me over there. There's a method to my madness.
and I don't need to use it again. I need to collect gears to get that working. It just seems like in every single, uh, and I don't remember what game it was, but they actually um, commented on that. Because it's like in every single Resident Evil game, everything is broken, and it's like, oh, it's missing three specific components that we need to go find. I think it was Revelations 2, and Claire said it. She's like, of course. And I just thought that was absolutely hysterical. Unequipped a grenade launcher. Don't want to waste that on a zombie. That would be a crime. Get the red herb. Red herbs cannot be used by themselves. If they are mixed with green, it doubles their healing power. Checking for other files. Because I think there was one in here, but I could be wrong. Zombie leaves a pool of blood, or if any leave, anything leaves a pool of blood or goo, it's dead. Oh! See, those camera angles can uh, really work against you. Dang. Ah, oh, dang, a Rooney. I'm hurting. Ah, oh, double dang, a Rooney. I'm hurting. Hurting real bad. There's a lighter. We need that. Yes. Hurting real bad, guys. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I'm not taking all my healing items. No! Yes. Secretary's Diary A. April 6th. I accidentally moved one of the stone statues on the second floor when I leaned against it. When the chief found out about it, he was furious. I swear the guy nearly bit my head off, screaming at me never to touch the statues again. If it's so important, then maybe he shouldn't have put them out in the open like that. See, that's giving you a clue. But I already knew that. April 7th. I heard that all of the art pieces from the chief's collection are rare items. Literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know which is the bigger mystery, where he finds these tacky things, or where he's getting the money to pay for them. May 10th. I wasn't surprised to see the chief come in today with, with another large picture frame in his hands. This time it was a really disturbing painting depicting a nude person being hanged. I was appalled by the expression on the chief's face when he leered at the painting. Why anyone would consider something like that to be a work of art is beyond my comprehension. Okay, I think I will call this episode here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Score, and as always, life stinks, play games, and stay awesome. Oh, fudge.